Hey everybody, it's time for another Rotto Top 10, and I am very excited about this one today. I am going to be counting down 10 games that are kind of ideal for life on the road, living in an RV, which means they have very, very specific requirements. And this is a topic that's been near and dear to my heart for a long time, uh, because it is one of my wife's biggest bucket list items to get in an RV and hit the road and never come back. And we almost did it a couple of years ago. We came really, really close, but then it didn't quite work out. But I have always been thinking about, well, what kind of compromises am I going to make? And I'm going to tell you about them today, uh, my ultimate top 10 games to take on the road with us. But I am not going to be making this trip alone. Hey, everybody, say hello to Sarah Shaw. Hi. And I should have pushed the button. I didn't push the button, Sarah. Oh, I'm already uh, goofing up, but that's okay. Here we go. It's Sarah Shaw. I was Hi. Lying. Hi again. Uh, hi. hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining today. Sarah does her own board game um, content, and she is on every platform, unlike me. I just pretty much live on YouTube. You're on the Instas, and the Ticking Talking, and the YouTubes, and the Faces with the books, and all of it. And your show is called Board Games in a Minute. It is, yes. Right. Um, and that's truth in advertising. Your videos are under one minute, where you just do like the most jam-packed, uh, you know, super efficient explanation, um, summary, and you give a little bit of an opinion, a little mini review of games, and you're just putting them out nonstop. That's true, yeah. <laughs> um, and why did you start it this way? I mean, what was the... Yeah, I actually started last April, so it's been a year, and I started when we went into lockdown because um, I found myself having some free time on my hands in the evenings, and I love board games, and I was browsing TikTok a lot, and I just wanted to make some kind of content mm -hmm. on TikTok about board games because I hadn't seen any, and the limit there is 59 seconds, so that's how Board Games in a Minute came to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and you do a great job. I mean, you cover so much stuff. And to be fair, occasionally you go beyond a minute. You do uh, broader topics as well, although apparently yeah. not on TikTok. Yeah, right? I started doing that on YouTube where I've done like some list videos and even a playthrough. Yeah. Cool. And we are at your one year anniversary then. To, we to are, yes. Now, I got to ask you, do you have any kind of deep seated, um, you know, desire, bucket list type thing to travel the highways and byways in an RV? I ask. Yes. You do. Um, because. I gave you a list of like 30 different topics. You yeah. came back with four, and one of them was this. And no one's ever shown any interest in this topic, even though I've wanted what? to do it forever. And That's then I insane. Yeah, I know. I said, well, no, pick one of the, well, any of these are great. And you chose this one, and it's because you, you, you yearn for the open road? I do. I mean, there's so much to see in America. Mm -hmm. I realized that there's just so much I haven't seen yet in terms of national parks, gorgeous highways, small towns. I would love to take a road trip in an RV someday wow. and see all of it. Yeah. And I do know you are the most hardcore of hardcore gamers. I mean, one uh, <laughs> behind you to see that. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's interesting too. Uh, by day, correct me if I'm wrong. You are a uh, you're a, a lawyer. A, you actually told me three times before we start, and I've already forgotten again because I've not heard the term. Legal aid attorney. So it's nonprofit work, and we do mo like civil litigation, all civil work in legal aid. Wow. And um, and so that is your your day job, and your superhero alter identity is board games in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you secretly desire to take the show on the road. Cool. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Yeah. That, that is. Awesome. I mean, as we've been talking, uh, you and I are such kindred spirits on so many levels. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is uh, my yearly anniversary, too. So, all oh, kinds wow. of stuff going Happy on. Happy anniversary. Thank you. And to you as well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, um, I think enough of the, uh, the back and forth. The folks actually want to hear us count from 10 to 1. And yeah. so, if you're ready to go, I am too. I'm ready. Okay. Well, I'll do mine, and then we'll do yours. Neither of us have any idea what the other one's coming up with, and um, so let's start. Let me get. I get. Got to get my browser back up here. I believe we're ready to go. So we're going to start with my number ten. And I should say, the way I uh, did this. Let's come back over full screen for a second. The the way I decided to break it down for me as a countdown was um, starting with. Well, I, I looked at, okay, if I had to have a hardcore number 10, I could have no more than 10 in my RV because of restrictions of space, restrictions of just table space, all the rest of it. My number one is the thing I would choose if you said, oh, I could only have one. My number three is the one, is the third one I'd choose if you could say I could have three. So my number 10 is, uh, 
I mean, I, I love all these games. I want to live with them on the road. And uh, but it is the one that you know, if if you said I could only have nine, well, my number ten would not make the list. And that was a whole big preamble to tell you about <laughs> my number ten, which is Asonia. Now I don't know if you know this one. No, I don't. No, I've heard I, of it, but I've not played it. I okay, so you have heard of it. This yeah. is brand new. This is the newest game on my list. And I have to admit, I was thinking long and hard. I wanted to make sure I had a deck builder. Um, and I was, okay, which one to do? And I almost went with paperback, which is kind of my go-to because paperback just has replay value for days and all of that. And it's a it's a really easy game to teach in case you run into anybody on the road. But um Asonia, my, my copy, my Kickstarter copy of Asonia, literally just showed up a couple days ago, and I was looking through it, and I was remembering how in love Jen and I were with it when uh, I covered it on Kickstarter, and I had to go with it because this is a pure deck builder, uh, you know, a deck of cards, uh, you know, a master deck, four cards on display at any given time you can buy, and it does a lot of stuff to really separate itself from the pack. And the number one thing that really makes Asonia special is control, which is kind of antithetical. Deck builders are all about, hey, get a bunch of cards and then see what the deck will give you and try and figure it out. This game gives you so many small little tweaks to the standard Dominion deck building formula that gives you um, the ability to pull off on a regular basis. Really cool, powerful combos. You know, in Dominion, you spend a lot of time slowly building, slowly building, then hoping for those two cards to get together, because that'll be amazing. This game, it just goes from 0 to 50 in no time at all, and you are pulling off those combos really quickly. And even though the base game just has a relatively small number of cards, there's so much variety in the powers that these cards have. Uh, the ability to actually take cards out of your deck and make them permanent resources you can always call upon. Or um, you know, dig through the your own draw pile, or the common draw pile, and um, the game actually comes with a really nice solo campaign where you can play against a group of different solo adversaries. There is just an amazing amount of deck building goodness in this box, um, probably even more so than. Um, than paperback, which is normally my go-to. And so, I did put it at number 10 because it's a little iffy for me because I've, I haven't played enough, but I think this game... I've seen some people who have gotten their copies and played it a lot for a month now saying that this is the Ray's Arcana of this year. And if you know Ray's Arcana, that's really saying something. And I, I do think Asonia lives up to that. So, it is. If I were going to be on the road for a year and I could only take one deck builder, it would be my number 10, Asonia. Wow, that's great. So my number 10, I'm not sure if you've ever played it, is called Dice Throne. So the individual boxes are a little bit chunky, but you can take out the the game trays mm -hmm. and then um, pack those up and get a whole bunch of them and stick them in your RV. So there's a bunch of different characters that you can play. And I love the custom dice for each character. And they all have different abilities that you're trying to upgrade. I absolutely love Dice Throne. And I think it would be a great game for the road because it'll give you a lot of variability. And depending on like what you're in the mood for, you can play that different character and maybe become like a pro at the different characters that you're sure. playing. I think there's like a lot of room for improvement for myself when I play this game. I've played a bunch of them now, and I still look forward to playing them again and again and trying to learn how to use the different abilities together and yeah, just try to get really good at it. I love it. Have you played it? I have played I it. I assume you have. Uh, I, yeah, I yeah. covered it when the most recent time it was on Kickstarter. Uh, to the uh, I forget the name of the expansion, or maybe it was a standalone, but it turned it into a cooperative adventure game. Oh yeah, Dice yeah, Throne Dice Throne Adventures, I think. Adventures, I think. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you played that. Um, but you, are, are you talking about that, or no. are you just talking about just raw Dice Throne? Came with eight just characters, raw dice and it's throne. all just, about doing. Yeah, yeah, just all the different box sets. Yeah, I've not played the Adventures one yet, so. Wow, yeah. that's the coolest way to play it. Um, you know, well, Already? well, for us because it turns it into a cooperative game. And so oh, wow. I, I assume then when you're talking about dice stones, you are suggesting, hey, I'm going to take all of dice stones because there's like three or four different big. I mean, and we're talking gigantic boxes. Um, oh yeah, they're behind fit in your me. RV. Oh no, they won't. So that's what I'm saying. You can take out the inserts and then compress them, hopefully, if you need to. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I, an individual character, I mean, they come in individual boxes that are almost like the size of an old, you know, VCR cassette tape. Um, oh, you know, they, it's, yeah, it's a they really are. smartly yeah. packaged game. But, um,. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you take all that stuff out, you've just got the one folding board for each character. Each character has, what, six dice, five dice, something like yes. that? Yeah. And then a yeah. relatively small deck of cards. You're right. So it would have a very small table presence. I mean, so it would definitely fit. 
and uh, huge amounts of replayability, very oh, yeah. dice driven. So you really dig the uh, the player versus player head to head with whoever is traveling these highways and byways with yeah. you. I really do. I think it would be so much fun. Like if I were traveling on the road with another person, like to pull out Dice Throne and, you know, just keep track of who is better at it, who's, you know, and just have like an ongoing competition of Dice Throne. I think that would be so oh, much like fun. Oh, like elimination tournaments and stuff like that. Sure, sure, sure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good one. And it's certainly a well-loved game. And I mean, you really got to try... Um, I think it's Dice Throne Adventures. I mean, if you throw that yeah, into the to. box as well, then you've got a really broad game um, because it, it can be a very big, expansive adventure game that can last for several hours. Whereas, you know, a regular oh. game is like a, just a quick 20-minute duel. So, hmm. yeah. So, I mean, you're talking Dice Thrones as a whole, just throwing, uh, stripping it all down, putting it yeah. in a bunch of plastic baggies, and then, you know, putting it in one of those mini cubbies all over the place. I think that is oh, yeah. an excellent number 10. All right. Uh, Dice Thrones. Uh, plus adventures. I, I, you got to throw that in there. Although I don't think it's available yet. So you'll pick that up oh. on the road. Okay. Someday, yes. Let's see. Well then, uh, moving on to my number nine uh, is Castles of Burgundy. And I went back and forth. I would love to do Castles of Burgundy, the new, uh, I think it's the 20th anniversary edition, because that version comes with so much stuff. It comes with over a decade's worth of promos and expansions and whatnot. But I do worry that that would be a bit... Uh, it, it's it's a it'd be it'd be a lot to store, so I could go with the original Castles of Burgundy too. At the end of the day, Castles of Burgundy is in my top ten games of all time. Uh, it is des designer Stefan Feld's greatest game of all time. At its heart, it's a really simple Euro where every turn you're gonna roll a couple of dice. Those dice allow you to draft tiles and then place them into your own little province of Burgundy and create all kinds of really interesting combos. And uh, my wife and I, we played it dozens of times, and it never gets old. And this is, for us, it'd be perfect for a lazy afternoon down at the RV park. We don't really feel like going and seeing the sights of wherever we are. We just want to play a nice, long, 90-minute, 90 90 two-hour-long game and just really get deep into it. And uh, so, yeah, whichever version you want. I'd rather take the new one just because there'd be so much variety. But even just the original uh, Burgundy has replay value for years' worth. I mean, you'll never, uh, you know... It'll never outlive its freshness, I don't think. And uh, so, yeah, it is my number nine. If people wonder, why is one of my top ten games of all time my number nine on this list, that will make sense later on. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll call back to it. But for now, uh, Burgundy is my number nine. Have you played Burgundy? Um, I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, oh, but no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> I know, I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you... And so, so you you must know somebody who has it. Um, oh, of course, yeah. yeah. It's it's on my list, but you know, I, I don't know if this is a problem you have, but once you become a content creator, it's like you're you end up playing a lot of new stuff, yes. and you got to keep up with the new stuff. Yes. So, yeah. That, yeah. And and that is true. And yeah, this is a game that's a decade yeah. old, so it's not like there's a lot of. Although honestly, I bet you, if you did a B Castles of Burgundy in a minute, um, just because it is to this day so well loved, I bet you it would climb your rankings pretty high, uh, or pr pretty quickly. And I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, I mean, oh yeah, no, I definitely want to play it. It's on my list of games to play. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've seen enough of your content to know I, I think you would absolutely love it. And then you would say, oh, I maybe so. I should have put it on my top 10 as well. Because I'm assuming, since you haven't played it, it's not on your list. <laughs> it's no. not, no. So my number okay. nine is Dixit. Dixit! Because yeah, I feel like it's the perfect game to take on the road because, you know, you may have times where you're sitting around a campfire and you want to play a game that's kind of like a storytelling game with beautiful artwork. And I feel like Dixit really fits that vibe, mm -hmm. like, of being on the road. And, you know, as you're experiencing new things on the road, you'll have, like, more of an imagination and be able to come up with different kinds of clues for these cards. The artwork might remind you of different things that you've experienced. So I feel like it just really fits well with being on the road. And that's why I had to include now, it. Now, I have to yeah. ask you, how many people are in your RV with you? Because, of course, Dixit is a <laughs> three-player minimum game. Okay, so let's say there's three of us, or we're going to meet people when we park our RV somewhere. We'll meet people and we'll, you know, befriend them and play games. You know what? Them. You will. That is definitely true. Yeah. Um, if you do live an RV lifestyle, you find, um, you, you really get a very vibrant social life. And honestly, there are few games as good as Dixit 
for sitting down and playing and, you know, getting to know people. It's a great icebreaker. Um, it really is. You know, we, we, I feel like you learn so much about people and like what kinds of things they like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just the way they think. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, because it is all about one player uh, chooses a card, uh, gives a clue related to it, then everybody else chooses cards from their own hands to, um, you know, try to match that, and then they're all revealed, and everybody has to ask, well, what did the clue giver mean? Which was their card? And it sounds so simple, but it <laughs> is so interesting and rich and deep, and there's just no way you won't laugh out loud many, many times while playing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. That makes perfect sense. If I were looking for social intertwinement and interactions with people on the road, I would probably take it. Interesting, Dixit is the only game I own that does not work well for two players. Uh, we do keep it specifically for the reasons you say to, um, oh, yeah. yeah, just to have it for friends and family or complete and total novices. So in that yeah. regard, I, do, I agree. It's kind of perfect for uh, Life on the Road. A very good call. I'm kind of embarrassed I didn't put anything like that oh. on my list now that I think about <laughs> That's it. That's okay. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to be more mis misanthropic, I think, on, uh, on, my, on my road trip, whereas you're wanting to meet out and, and, and get to greet everybody, which is very cool, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that is a very good uh, number nine. My number eight is Miyabi from Haba Games and designer Kimmer Keys, or you know, just Michael Keesling. I don't know if you've played this one. No, I nope? haven't. Okay. Well, um... I recommend all of these. Make room for them in your Winnebago. Um, this is a tile laying game, and I love tile laying more than just about any other gameplay mechanism there is. And this is one of the best tile layers that have come out in years. Um, it's it's really nice because the tile laying is not just laterally, but you can actually lay tiles on top, and so you're building vertically in addition to horizontally. But the the thing that really makes it interesting um, on your turn, you draft a tile. You're going to put it somewhere in your little grid, trying to make a lovely little. Uh, I believe it's a Japanese garden and score points in a bunch of different ways. But the thing is, uh, you put it down and uh, you mark the column you placed it in, and now you can't put anything else in that column. And so uh, you are, you start finding yourself just getting more and more squeezed as just a tighter and tighter noose comes around your neck, and you did it to yourself because, oh, I really want to put that one over here, but I can't now because I put this other one over there. And it is a very Brilliant, super simple, very, very um, elegant game that is also really, really deep. And uh, one of the reasons I put this on the list, I actually I ended up putting a couple of tilers because I love them so much. This one I put on because the game, if I recall correctly, comes with like five different variants built in. So extra little rules you can put in, like a little frog that hops around from tile to tile. So it has a lot of variety and a lot of variability too. Just the core game without any of the extra stuff is almost easy enough to teach to... I mean, maybe this would be the game I teach with, play with strangers. Maybe. Um, but then once you start turning on the different modules, it just it just explodes with depth and crunchiness in the best way. And it's a really nice looking little game too. And uh, you toss the box, it's just a, a bunch of little polyomino tiles that hardly takes up any space at all. I mean, for most of these games, it sounds like the, what you suggested with uh, Dice Thrones, I think is kind of a need be. Just get, um, you know, just take all the components, put them in one big baggie, uh, and just stuff them all into a corner. And so I think it's very portable. It doesn't take up a lot of table space, which is really huge. And I am. Uh, just talking about it makes me want to play it right now. It's absolutely fantastic. So my number eight is a relatively, it is a new game, so I'm not sure if you've had a chance to play okay. it yet. It's Glow by Cedric oh, Shabusi. I have it, and I haven't played it yet. I really loved it when I played it. And the reason I chose this game is not only is it compact, so it's perfect for the road, but the board has two different modes of of play so you can flip over the board and play in like one kind of game that uses boats or the other side yeah and that's the other side with um mm -hmm. where you'll use your little adventurers and try to put down a tent in a location to try to get points so it's a it's a set collection game where you're trying to get cards you're drafting cards you have these amazing dice where you're rolling the dice and you're trying to you're going to assign the dice to all the cards you have and then try to move a certain number of spaces on the board to try and get the glow points that you need in order to win this game so i love everything that's going on in this game and it is definitely like an adult spin on a roll to move game because the oh. dice you're using, you're first using them on the cards before you're then placing them on the board in order to move. So uh -huh. you're you, you're using your dice for two different things. And so you have to be kind of strategic about, you know, which dice you're going to choose 
you know, to keep or whether you're going to choose to re-roll them. And another thing about this game is you can collect fireflies, which I think is so cute and goes perfectly with the whole on the road theme, you know, okay. fireflies. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think this game is actually available yet. They sent me a prototype of it. About a, Is that what you have as well? No, I... Or actually, has it gone to retail yet? Uh, yeah, I got my copy from a friend who ordered it from France, so... Oh, oh, okay, so it's not widely available as yet. Not yet, not yet, oh, but okay. it will be. It's, uh, I know that, um, it... I know that Board Game Bliss in Canada had it in stock for a little bit, but they sold out so quickly. I do imagine once it hits America, it's going to be pretty sought after. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's stunning looking. Uh, it's, it's just it's gorgeous. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess some people might be put off by the, the black and white mixed with you know splashes of color aesthetic. I have seen some people say, I don't know if I like the look of it, but you've seen it in oh. real life. I and... love it. I think it's so striking like to have this amazing, gorgeous black and white art and then splashes of color. And there's the splashes and of color on the cards, which with the UV spotting, and it is fantastic. Ah. Yeah, you'll get the UV spotting on the board on the cards themselves. And if I remember correctly, on the board too, I think. Okay. Um, really gorgeous. Super so gorgeous. So you, you get you you get these cards, you roll the dice, you activate the cards with the dice, which is what lets you travel around the world. That's it in a nutshell. Basically, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it looks gorgeous. And you know, I, I've been interested in it. I've been meaning to play it for a while, the prototype I've got, because it's from um oh Cedric Shabosi. Yeah. I don't know how to uh, uh, Cedric uh, Chabosset? I, yeah, do you, I don't know if French? I'm pronouncing it correctly, but yeah, he did T for Two and a bunch of other games. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, uh, most notably, um, Lewis and Clark, which yeah. is an incredible game. So, yeah, I've been really wanting to play this for a while, and you've really just um, put this at the top of my list. I might oh. get it done this month now oh, with awesome. uh, you kicking me in the butt. Uh, yeah, excellent choice. I, I mean, I, I've been really excited about this for a while. All right, cool. So, what is that? That was your number eight, right? Yes. Okay, then let's move on to my number seven, Shadowrun Crossfire, which is one of two cooperative games I put on the list I because I love cooperation. And um, this one is, uh, interestingly, another deck builder. Uh, so I've actually got two deck builders. It didn't occur to me before. I thought, oh, i got to get a deck builder, which is why I put a Sony on. But I already had a deck builder here. But a Sony is like a true deck builder. This one is more of a cooperative, just basically fight for your life game where uh, every round, it, it's an seemingly insurmountable a number of bad guys come your way and you have a very, very small deck of cards uh, and very, very few hit points. And it really feels like there is no way you can possibly survive. The deck is so stacked against you. And every round, new crossfire cards, which are event cards, come out that hits you even harder. So you would not... It, it would be forgiven for the first couple times playing it thinking, this game is literally impossible. There's no way you can win. Um, and a lot of people give it a couple of tries and then walk away. But the thing is... This game is winnable, but it requires you to pretty much completely rewire the way you think about how to overcome cooperative combat challenges. And um, if you can learn the very unique rhythms to it, and uh, you know, like a big one that I mean, everybody thinks, oh well, I got to keep myself alive, got to get those healing uh, medic cards when I can. Those are a trap. If you're spending time healing yourself, that means you're not fighting fast enough to take out the enemies. Because you know, in this game, the best defense is always a good offense. There's and there's a a lot of special little tricks and strategies you can learn. So much so that I actually recorded a five-part series about uh, strategy, uh, walking through a, a way to play the game, and really kind of contradicts any expectation of what you would think the ideal turns are. It's it's a blast. Jen and I, we played it over 50 times. We've got it down to where a game for us, including getting it out of the box and putting it away, is 20, 25 minutes. And, um, and another nice thing about it, too, is... There is kind of a meta game to it because every time you play, provided you don't get completely wiped out, you can earn um, karma points, which are basically experience points. And over time, you can spend those experience points to literally upgrade your characters with stickers. So it's kind of a little bit of a legacy game, although you don't have to use stickers if you don't want. You can just write down on a post-it note what upgrades you've gotten. And um, you can keep on leveling your characters up to go through bigger and tougher adventures. Like I said, I've played over 50 times now, and we are still not strong enough to be able to take on the big super dragon. 
dragon yet. But I do... I, so this game, every time you sit down to play, you're going to have a fun little standalone, really incredibly intense and nail-biting, but incredibly fast, cooperative fight for your survival game. And um, provided you don't completely blow it, you'll be earning experience so you can get stronger, And uh, but then you increase the difficulty of the bad guys as well. So it, it adds kind of like this overarching reason to keep playing because I just want to I want to earn more upgrades and so I could I would happily have this on the road with me so I could play it another 50 times so I could finally get strong enough to take on the dragon and so that is like a a, a long-term goal for me with this game and then plus on top of it while it comes in a full-size box if you toss the box it's uh, like most deck builders it's just a, a relatively tight uh, group of of cards, or a tight deck of cards, some um, tokens to keep track of damage and whatnot, and some little player boards. So it takes up almost no space at all. I love it to pieces. I'm assuming you haven't played it yet. No, that but it sounds amazing. I mean, if you've played it at least 50 times, it seems like a game I have to play. Well, yeah, I, I mean, as you were talking about, if you're a content creator like us, you don't get a lot of chance to go back and play games over and over again. My wife and I, we made the time for this because we love it that much. It is actually, literally, my number two game on my top 100 of all time. I love it that much. Um, why wasn't it higher? Because I have another cooperative game, and I figured, okay, I, I, I did a lot of pairs here. I, okay, this is the one co-op I've got to have, and then, okay, if I have another co-op, what would it be? And so the second one is uh, Shadowrun Crossfire. And so there'll be another co-op coming pretty soon. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's definitely not for everyone, though. I mean, a, a lot of people, maybe even the majority of people who go into it and give it a try, ultimately find themselves very frustrated because it is so harsh and so unforgiving and just requires you to completely rewire your co-op mind. So, I mean, I'm not saying everybody should just rush right out and get it, but we love it and I, I would not leave home without it. So that is my number... I should have written down what number it is. Was that my number six or my number seven? I've got the list. That was your number that seven. That was my number seven? Thank you, um, Shadowrun Crossfire. Okay, then, what's your number seven? Wow, I don't think I've ever played a game 50 times. That's truly impressive and <laughs> amazing. Um, my number seven is Whitehall Mystery. So this is like a streamlined version of Letters from Whitechapel. I am a huge fan of deduction games. And this one is compact. So that's why it's on this list because it's a pretty small box. Oh, okay. And I love I love hidden movement games. And this one is great because you can play it as a two-player game, which is actually what I prefer. I prefer it when one player plays as Jack and the other player plays as all the investigators and gets to move all of okay. them. Um, so then you you're not like, you know, because otherwise you're playing in teams where all the investigators, like if it's multiple players, are trying to work together. But if you're just one player playing as all the investigators, then I feel like you have a better chance of hopefully catching Jack. Mm -hmm. And um, as someone who loves hidden movement games, I had to include one. I just ah. think it'll fulfill that that itch for um, for deduction when you are really itching to solve like a mystery or use your like use a lot of brain power to figure something out. So, yeah. okay, so you love hidden movement games, and you put this one in over the original uh, Letters from Whitechapel. Or... Because that one's huge. Because that one's huge. Yeah. And in fact, I think <laughs> most of these are fairly huge, aren't they? As a general rule. They, they're always a big board, and then the players got their own board and secret screens. Yeah. So is it mostly just the form factor that put this on the top, or do you really like this one more not than the just, other? Not just the form factor. Actually, when I bought this one, it actually... Um, replaced letters really? from Whitechapel for me because it is streamlined. It does away with some like fiddly rules that I didn't think were necessary in the original. So um, I haven't actually even picked up the original since I bought uh, Whitehall Mystery. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's time to jettison that one then. Cool. It is, yeah. But I love this one. It is. It's fantastic. So size yeah, aside, you... this would still be, since you love, you know, hidden movement deduction games so much, this would be the one, um, even if all of them were this small. Yes, wow. for okay. sure. Okay, well, there yeah. you go then. I have to admit, I haven't played it, nor have we played the original Whitechapel. A couple of reasons. One, um, I, unlike you, I have a real problem with, say, Fury of Dracula having to control four characters worth of stuff. Um, you know, I mean, I personally, I would rather, and you know, there are some games that have uh, done a much better job about that. Um, and then as well, my wife just she will refuse to play this for the same reason she'll never play Mr. Jack because she doesn't want to play a game where she has to be. 
you know, a serial murderer. And so the, the theme just hits too hard uh, for home for her. I mean, I guess you're cool with that. You just kind of put that aside. Look, I'm just running around hiding from stuff. I yeah, I can put it aside also because it's so far back in history, I feel like. Um, and since there is like an element of kind of uh, a mystery to who uh, Jack the Ripper was, um, it's kind of like I know it's it's real. I know it's real history, but it's also kind kind of like a mythological kind almost, of thing. Almost, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's yeah. it's gone into lore and and legend. As exactly, well. that is yeah. true. And apparently, if you do have a problem with that, you can be like this person on Board Game Geek who basically rethemed it to be Inspector Gadget. So, oh, wow. I, I guess that's, oh, that's a possibility. Amazing. Um, cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is, yeah. Um, are we gonna have any overlaps? I wonder. I don't think I, you, you so. Think. I, mean, I mean, yeah, so you know me well enough to know that it's probably yeah. not going to happen. Well, I, 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 my hope springs eternal for me, so I'll, I'll keep going on it. So let's move on to my number six. This might be one where we have overlap. I think, I mean, this one's a crowd pleaser. My number six is On Tour. You, on Tour. Have you played On Tour? I've played the digital version. I have not played the actual okay. board game version. Okay. Of that's it. good. Yeah. Now I I wanted to have at least one roll and write on uh, in the RV as well because Jen I really enjoy that quite a bit. And um, on tour was the one. It's not necessarily. It might be my favorite roll and write of all time. It's certainly in my top three. But um, the fact that it does not actually use a uh, you know a pad of paper. It's uh, you know it's got dry erase marker board, so you can just keep reusing it. That's very much appreciated if I'm going to be on the road for a year and I don't want to have to worry about not being able to play it. But more importantly, thematically, this is all about plotting out a tour across the continental United States or Europe, if you've got the newer version, because I think there's uh, the map is two-sided, so there's a Europe side and an America side. And that's fantastic. I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, I can imagine as we are, you know, holed up in... South Dakota for the night. Um, you know, when I roll and I, you know, I say, okay, that's going to be my third leg of my trip. Uh, I think that I, 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 I just really like the idea thematically. I like the meta of this is what we're doing in real life and what we're playing in the game. It's also another. Come to think of it, I didn't really think of this at the time, but it's a great one to play with anybody. If Jen does make friends with somebody because we're in a place for a week and they say, well, what do you folks do for fun? We play board games. Well, let's play one of them with you. This is probably the one I'd pull out because you can teach it to anybody. The uh, simple push your luck of, okay, I, it's a seven and a four. Uh, I got to put a 74 somewhere and I got to put a 47 someplace else and I got to make all these things link up by the end. Can I pull it off? What am I going to do? Um, it's absolutely brilliant. So you have played it in digital form. I have, And what yeah. do you think of it? Um, I have roll and rights that I prefer more to, more than this one, but it's a great game too. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have to admit, I came really close just because it's brand new and I'm really excited about it. Putting Hadrian's <laughs> Wall on the list. Oh, I want to play that oh, so badly. You will like it very much. There's no way you can't like it. Oh. But ultimately, I mean, just the the crossover theme. Uh, you know, just the fact that it, you yeah. know, it's it's us playing the game of what we're actually doing. We're on tour. I I, I think it's great, and and it's just a blast. I, we played this game well over a dozen times uh we did a, if you want to play it you can do a search for rotto on tour and watch a video of me and jen playing and you can play along with us at home if you want folks so you can get an idea of what the game is like as i set up the video that way and uh yeah and since sarah has played it i'm gonna call it a crossover of sorts because i think that might be the best we get <laughs> okay. all right so what have you got for uh, number six so my number six is um, also a new game, which I'm not sure is available in America uh -huh. yet. And it's by the same design called Shamans. Have you heard oh, of it? No. Shamans? <laughs> Shamans. Oh. Yeah. So that's uh, S-H-A-M-A-N-S. Shamans. I, um, let's see. I can see that I've got it marked in my collection. No. Well, okay. It's going on my wish list right now, since everybody can see me actually live on Board Game Geek, logged in as me. Um, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, nope. It's going right back off my wish list because three to five players. Oh. There you go. It's dead to me. If it it's can't play with just my wife. Okay. So that's why I haven't paid much attention to it, but I am curious because, again, Cedric Chevoussi is yeah. a great, great designer, and so I'm definitely interested in anything that he would put together. So what's this one about? I mean, obviously, Shaman. So this one is on my list because before this game, I was not a huge fan of trick-taking games. Oh, okay. But this is a trick-taking game and a social deduction game combined in one. It is so incredibly clever. What does um, that mean? 
Yeah, so you are going to be assigned identities first um, as either the light or the dark. I can't remember exactly what they were called. So you'll have the light characters and then the dark characters. Okay. And the light ones are trying to get, um, you know, avoid the moon reaching the end of the moon track. Um, and the dark players want it to reach the end of the moon track. Okay. And you have these cards in your hand and you have different suits and each time each time there's a turn someone is going to be the leader of that turn and they'll be the first one to place a card and then other players will need to place a card and if you are on the good side you will want to place cards that are of the same suit so that the moon tracker doesn't go up the track but if you are a bad guy you're going to want to play a different card which may even trigger some abilities so there's different tokens you can earn okay. and you can try to kill off other players there's Jeez. yeah so it's 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 a little more than your usual trick taking uh -huh. game and with that social deduction element as well it becomes so interesting like because you're I, actually trying to hide whether you are for good or darkness well if you're for darkness you definitely want to hide that you're for darkness why yeah. because the the good players have because the opportunity the to knock you out yeah, they could they could find an opportunity to kill you at some point in the game. Okay, yeah. so you are. But it's multiple. You're playing multiple times, so it's a point game in the end. Mm -hmm. So that's another amazing thing about it. So you're collecting points, and the first person I think to reach eight points is the one who will win. So in that way, it's kind of also semi cooperative because if you're a good guy in the game you're playing, you obviously want to win and get those points as the good guys. But then if you get in the next round, you're a bad guy, then you're not going to want to cooperate with other people so you're kind of working together but you're also kind of working on your own because you want to win the game with eight points geez louise this yeah. sounds really really clever i it's so clever i that's why even though i'm not a fan of trick-taking games when i play this i was like mind blown uh -huh. like unbelievable yeah now here's the question you're taking this on the road with you you have one other person in the vehicle probably and so this is yeah, another again. one that you're playing with people you meet um at the rv parks yeah. Uh, yes. You know, it's a reasonable assumption that you are going to run into people who understand the basics of trick-taking. Is this a thing that, like the crew, uh, you know, the crew is a great trick-taking game that it's cooperative and like, yo, you can play it with people who've played Hearts and Pinochle, and it just takes a little bit of, of, of readjusting for them to be able to pick up. It sounds like this has a lot more going on. Is this kind of gateway-ish still? I still think it could be a gateway-ish game. I think um, as long as you have a really gr a good handle on the rules, you'd be able to explain it well to someone who maybe doesn't even have a background in board games. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, no, that is very, very cool. I am kind of bummed. I mean, but again, I, I just I have to dismiss it out of hand because I'm never going to play it with three players oh. unless you come and visit, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, one day. Yeah, there you go. We're right up here in Pacific Northwest. All righty, cool. Wow, yeah. that is a really interesting one. And it's gorgeous, and obviously, it's perfect. It's a tiny little box. Um, yeah. Do you have any other... No, I, I want to ask if you have any other trick takers. I want to do the same thing. If you could only take one trick-taking game, would this be the one? Because it ticks these other boxes for you. Oh, yeah, this would definitely be the one. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay, well, that is very, very cool, and it makes me sad. But um, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. If I want to play some trick-taking, we've always got the crew. Which, by the way, the crew is probably my number 11. It just missed the list. I was so close oh, wow. to putting it on. All right, but um, we're not talking about what didn't happen. We're talking about what did happen. So we're moving on <laughs> yeah. to my number five, uh, which is Tiny Towns from AEG. I, and I know you know this one. Everybody knows Tiny Towns. I do. You must have played it. Oh, yeah. Yes. I've played it with the AEG folks, too, on their live oh, stream over the, the well, summer. Uh, yeah, the, the day, uh, are they still doing those yeah. every day? No, no, no. Those ended a couple of months ago, okay. I think. Yeah. But you did, yeah, I showed up for one of those as well. And I actually, at the time, they said I had done the best of any guests they had had up to that time. But that was, in, that was in June. So they hadn't had very many guests on, I'm sure, since then. Do you remember what your score was? No, I don't. Um, I remember I did beat, I think I beat the designer because he was there. Uh, but I didn't beat the developer. I didn't beat Josh Woods. He beat me and I came in second. And everybody was very surprised. Um, so... I'm, I'm very proud of that, obviously, um, because I <laughs> yeah. clearly love Tiny Towns. This is another great game for road living. It's incredibly small footprint, so pretty much easy to play anywhere. And, um, you know, just a few player boards, some cubes, and some cards, but so deep. Every time I've played this game, 
one, you get so much variety because you get a set of, what is it, seven different unique cards that represent all the different types of buildings you can build in your tiny town, and they all have different special powers, and they all interact in interesting and different surprising ways that forces you to completely rethink how you are going to approach the game. And um, with multiple different modes of play, there's the bingo-style version, which um, I think is the way Jen prefers to play, um, because when she plays with me, I do tend to, you know, either players can pick for themselves when it's they're the lead. Hey, this is what everybody builds in their town. You're going to build some stone or some glass or some wood. And I could pick stuff that I need, but I also try to pick stuff that I know does you no good, because if I can anticipate what you're trying to build, I can really slow you down. Um, and so I have found, when playing the standard version, I do tend to be a little not care bearish, quite frankly. I do push as hard as I can, which is why I think ultimately for us, the, hey, look, it's just we draw cards and that tells us what everybody gets to build uh, is probably the better way to go. Um, I think this is another good gateway game. There are certain combinations of cards that are really simple, so I could teach this to the folks on the side of the road. But I can't imagine getting tired of playing this game just because Jen and I enjoy it so much. Uh, there's exp there's one expansion that's already come out. I think another one is about to come out, or maybe it's come out as well. And even with the additional stuff, it's still going to be an incredibly tight little package. And uh, yeah, I could play it for days. So you like I mean, you do like Tiny Towns, right? I do. I love Tiny Towns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then don't say any more. We'll find out if you liked it enough to maybe, maybe, if we get lucky, have one true crossover. But what's your number four? Uh, number five. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> number five. I can count. There's my first goof of the show. My number five is Fort. So just mm. like you, I wanted a deck builder on my list. And I think Fort is perfect for RV life because it is such a compact box. And the theme, I think, goes really well with uh, RV life. Like, yes. you know, your kids in a park, you're building a fort, you're building like a tree house or whatever. And yeah, it's got adorable artwork. and But it's really clever. And it's really like you have that yard where you're going to discard... Put cards that you didn't use um, that other players can then steal from you. You know, you've got adorable little pizza tokens. And yeah, I just absolutely love this deck builder. Um, you can store items in your backpack, which can help you when you're playing. It's a really great little deck builder and I, I absolutely adore it. Yeah. Um, one thing I'm curious about, I know a lot about the game. In fact, actually, I just got a copy. It just showed up the other day. So I'm really looking forward to trying it. One thing I'm curious, how much variety is there in the cards themselves and, you know, and the effects of what they do? I think there's a fair bit of a variety. So when I've played it, you know, I've played it a couple of times and each time I've played it, I feel like I've had a completely different experience depending on which hand of cards I get. You know, I might try going for a different kind of strategy of which suit I'm trying to really uh, establish in my deck. And, you know, um, I, you know, I always preface everything by saying I'm not the best board game player. I okay. tend to lose most games I play. Uh -huh. So maybe you don't want to listen to anything I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's variety. And I think, you know, it's definitely got replayability value, like a lot of it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love the art. I love the gameplay. Um, I, I had a special guest on last month, Tim Chuan, who did a quick rundown for it, and I fell even more in love with it. So, and I'm very excited that it just showed up in the mail the other day. And who knows, if we'd done this a year from now, or even a month from now, I might have put it on my list too, because I do love everything about yeah, the Yeah, and I just feel like if you're on the road, you got to have a game with Kyle Farron's artwork on it. Like, I sure. am in love with his artwork. Yep. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious. So you played it a fair bit. You know it. I mean, obviously, from what you've talked about before, you, you are no stranger to the uh, the punch-em-ups. You're, you're not quite as Care Bear as me. But I, I had kind of ignored it first because everybody said, oh, this is a really mean-spirited game. But I don't really get the impression that it is. Because it's, yes, you can take my cards, but only if I choose not to use them. Right? Yeah, exactly. But, you know, people might say it's mean-spirited because there's going to be times when you want to use a card, but you can't use all of the cards that you're that are in your hand. So you will have to make those difficult decisions of which cards to put in your yard. So even though you've put it in your yard, it still can be a bit mean spirited when someone <laughs> takes a really good card from you because right. you just didn't have the opportunity to use it at that time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's it's you know it was super popular. I think it was sold out for quite a while. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, and hard to get. It took me a while to get a copy, and I'm looking forward to playing it. And it's obviously a very very good choice. I'm sure a lot of people will agree this is a perfect one. So that was your number five. Um, four. Yes. Good call. All right. 
Here's my number four. It is my other tile land game, because I did a lot of pairs here. Um, it is Isle of Cats. I, I, now, that's a huge box. It is a huge box. It is a ridiculously <laughs> oversized, overstuffed box, and it doesn't need to be. Um, I mean, if, if you take out, especially if you're only looking at it as a two-player game, um, you know, I mean, you just need the boards, you just need the cards, you just need the uh, the, the polyomino pieces. You Yes, there's a lot of really nice, cool-looking cat meeples and stuff like that, but you don't need all that stuff. And the reason I, I had to put on my list is, one, I love tiling. So I mentioned earlier, um, Hanabi was my number two choice for a tiling game, but Isle of Cats was my number one. But another reason I love Isle of Cats so much is because it's also a really brilliant card drafting game. And I really wanted to have a card drafter as well. And um, another thing that's great about it, it, which again is, you know, for this life on the road where you make friends with new people at a... Uh, at uh, you know RV parks is it comes with a brilliantly um, conceived gateway version where you can strip out almost all the gamer style complexity and I actually did play this with my mother in law uh, because she is a, a huge cat lover when she visited us one time Jen and I played it with her and she loved it too knowing almost nothing about board games um, in fact always feeling very intimidated whenever she would visit Jen would always oh, come play games with us and she's like eh, I don't know if I'm really up for those games that you want to play but we did convince her because of the cats and she had a great time with it too so i think it works on so many different levels and you're right you got to leave the box at home um and you, you've got to really you're taking your cat on the road with you yeah but um but i figure you know what I, i've most of my entries have been really really tiny so i could afford to give myself a slightly more voluminous thing and the other important thing too is it doesn't take up much table space either it's a you know it's a fairly uh compact game with everybody working on their own um little ships trying to rescue cats from the Isle of Cats. So you like it, but you wouldn't have considered it because of the uh, form factor. Box size. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that was one I but you, actually you're, thought you're, about. Your dice thrown. Talk about box size. That's true. Yep, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Yep. That is a very good point. The defense rests, um, Your Honor. Yeah. Yes, I think you win this case. <laughs> 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 yeah, so my number four is actually a, also a tile laying game, oh, okay. and I think you'll love this one because it's a two-player tile yeah, yeah. laying game, Curious Cargo. Oh boy, yes. Um, have you played yes, this Yes, I have. I have filmed it. I'm going to pull my video up. Cargo. Let's see here if I can spell it. This is a brilliant design, definitely. It is so brilliant, and you know, it's perfect for being on the road. It is such a small, compact game, and you're putting your boards back to back and there's so much replayability. So basically you're trying to connect pipes so that you can load cargo onto these trucks and then get those trucks to your opponent's side and they're gonna try and connect pipes so that they can unload that cargo and put it in back into their factory. Um, it is very crunchy though, it is super difficult. Like I know that there's uh, different boards with different uh, diff difficulty levels and yeah. I'm still like the beginner ones and I still, I'm terrible at it, but I love it. It's like such a brain burner. It is such a brain burner, but it is so good with so much replayability. Yeah. It is. I, I agree with every single thing you said. Um, our problem with it was, because ultimately we didn't keep it. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, a couple things. The complexity that is in this game, I mean, this uh, has potential for analysis paralysis It does, yeah. to an extreme. And my wife definitely, I mean, this triggers her AP... Um, in such a big way, in a, um, you know, and, and I, you know, in it, at home I don't mind so much, but on the road, oh, if her saying, you know what, why don't you come back in ten minutes? I got a lot to think about here. I, I, I don't <laughs> think that's going to necessarily work as well. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll work better because yeah. I can just leave the RV and go uh, make <laughs> For a walk. Yeah, yeah, or, and go check out the Grand Canyon or something like that. But I mean, it's yeah. it was so crunchy because there are so many different ways you could use those pipes, trying to puzzle them together. I mean, it's really, really deep. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, we found the more we played it that it can be, it, it, there's no direct aggression. It's not like I can, you know, explode your pipes or destroy your factory or anything like that. But I can definitely make, because the brilliant thing, the interaction of the game is, I, if I eventually get my truck loaded up with stuff and it starts driving, it drives to your factory where um, you have the opportunity to kind of mess with my ability to... Uh, well, actually, well, one, it drives to your factory. You have the opportunity to kind of intercept it and offload so you can get points, but you also have the opportunity... I haven't played it again for a while now, to really kind of mess with the flow. Um, oh, that's what it was, yes, because... 
I've got my path that my trucks want to travel, um, you know, as yeah. they get loaded. But instead of me putting my trucks to try and make everything work, I can send my trucks to your side. And so oh, I, I see yes. you've got it perfectly. You've got all the spaghetti worked out, and that truck is going to load every single bay perfectly. And you know what? I'm just going to throw a little one in there just so it's all a little offset and it doesn't work. And um, yeah. the first time I did that to Jen, Jen said... Ugh. And I felt terrible doing it, but it was just the right thing to do. Um, so ultimately, yeah. the interaction, it can be really positive, and I love that. I love the idea of, hey, this should be all about me just trying to um, intercept what you're sending my way, but I can also just mess with what you're trying to build in the first place. Again, kind of indirectly, um, kept it off of our list. But again, a brilliant design. Definitely smart. So brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And but super like, yeah, it will definitely trigger AP in people. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know how long does it take you to play this game? I mean, it is, it should be just a quick little 15, 20 minute game, but that was not our experience. Oh no. It's no no yeah, no. no exactly. When I've played it, it's been much longer than yep, that. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, but a really good call. Very good call. That was your number yeah. four. Okay. Then let's move on to my number three, Manhattan Project Energy Empire which is a worker placement game um, all about um, you know trying to meet the power needs of the world, trying wherever possible to do it in a green way. Um, but hey, you know what? You can actually be really successful if you, uh, you know, uh, dabble in dirty uh, you know, uh, technologies for generating energy as well. Worker placement games, we played a lot. We tend not to get too terribly excited about them, but this one is really special because one of the main things you're doing is building different um, buildings that are associated with, I think it's government industry, and there's a third branch, uh, a third color. And the thing is, if I built a bunch of government buildings, I then want to do worker placement in the government zone, which limits what actually I can have, because that means I can activate, every, for every worker place I send to the government section of the board, I could potentially activate all of my government buildings. And so it's an engine building game where you can pull off really big, deep, rich combos. And it's one of the most satisfying games I've ever played. And um, when I mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, what's it? Uh, Castles of Burgundy, which is one of my favorite games of all time, came in relatively high. It's because I had this one lower. Originally, I was going to put Castles of Burgundy down, um, you know, close to the top. Because what is this? This was my number four. No, this is my number three. So I'm saying if you gave me three games, one of them would be this one. And that's really saying something. And um, it's... There's several things that really give this game longevity because in evaluating these, I'm trying to think of, you know, if I'm going to be on the road for a year or two, I'm going to play this game so much. And the uh, one of the cool things about this game is there are event cards. I think the game comes with 15 and every time you're going to reveal six of them and they actually tell a story over like 200 years of society developing. And, um, you know, whether there's going to be, you know, famines or nuclear disaster, um, you know, late in the game and whether there's going to be really great opportunities early in the game, it changes up the way you play because all kinds of different opportunities uh, to avoid or to take advantage of will come up in different different combinations every time you play, but it always does create a story. This has a... It, it, it's, this isn't like an Alexander Pfister game like Maracaibo or Newdale that actually has real written story, but it kind of feels like a story evolves naturally because of the way they did the... Uh, the, um, what do you call them? The, the event cards. And that really elevates this so much um, that I, I would I can just imagine wanting to play this game over and over and over again and seeing all these different kinds of combinations. And then on top of that, um, an incredibly satisfying worker placement game as well. So that's why Manhattan Project Energy Empire comes in at number three. Are you familiar with it? I'm familiar with it, and it's on my wish list of games to play. I haven't had a chance yet. You should. You will yeah. not regret it. Um, also, it's uh, you know, again, leave the box at home. The board itself is fairly small. The player boards are fairly small. So, I mean, I think it would fit on an RV table just fine. So that was another thing I considered as well. Why some of my other really favorite Euros didn't quite make it on the list, but this one, I think it'll fit. And I, I can imagine playing this game 50 times a year without breaking a sweat easily, just because of the variety. And it's just, it just feels so good to play. But anyway, that was my number three. What have you got? My number three, I think, is like probably the most perfect game you can imagine taking okay. with you on the road. Parks. Ah, sure, 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 sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Parks is a worker placement game. And, you know, you're basically visiting all the national parks in America. Indeed. And yes. the, you know, it's just 
stunning to the artwork of, of all the different parks is just beautiful but i just actually really enjoy this game i would say it's like an entry-level worker placement game but mm -hmm. if you're on the road and you're visiting parks while you're on the road i think you yeah. should definitely have parks with you <laughs> and yes. then when you play it you know it'll bring back memories of the various places you've visited and then it might give you ideas of where to go next so yeah i think in terms of uh, packing a worker placement game parks just seemed like the natural choice for an rv uh, yeah, it's like, it was like me putting on tour on the list because it's yeah. about being on tour. And this one is about one of the reasons you're on the road. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And it is a really sharp design, super popular. Let me ask you, how do you find it as a two-player game? Because when Jen and I played it, we thought, boy, you really should have three players to play this game. Um, I definitely enjoy it at more than two players, but I don't mind it at two players. Okay. I've, played okay. it, uh, I've played it at two players a number of times, and I've still enjoyed my plays of it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That is good to know. I will bear that in mind. It's it's absolutely gorgeous and it's really clever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you dig it at two, but at this point, I'm thinking you have at least two other people in your RV with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because... Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna be a big RV. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yes. Everybody's coming uh, on the trip. But yeah, a good call and a very very popular game. Super well loved. This game. I really should cover it. Uh, it's just that I mean, I, I I we just didn't find as a two player game that it was quite as strong. But again, you would disagree. Or you think you, you, you think it's okay at two. I think it's okay at two. I mean, I don't like I said, I don't mind playing it at two. I would prefer it at a higher player count, yeah. but I'm perfectly happy, like fine with playing it at two as well. Okay. Well, if we ever found ourselves in the same RV park at the same time, I would definitely come over and try to uh, squeeze into your little kitchenette and uh, be the third player, definitely. We'll make it happen. Yeah. All right. It sounds like a plan. Okay. My number two is Roll for the Galaxy. And the simple fact of the matter is, if this weren't on the list, my wife would not go on the road with me, quite frankly. <laughs> this would easily be her number one. It's why it's my number two. Uh, it's a brilliant, brilliant game all about building a intergalactic uh, space empire by rolling all these really cool special dice, uh, deploying them in secret. It's kind of... Let's see... I was going to say worker placement game, but no, it's not really because you're just you're, you're you roll all these dice and in secret you decide what am I going to use them for, and um, it's very much bo born of race for the galaxy. So you can explore the galaxy to find more planets, you can develop the planets or new technologies, you can have your planets develop goods that you could then trade to get more resources to start that whole sequence all over again, and it is just infinitely replayable. With, even just in the base game, with the number of tiles that come. I mean, this is another one that Jen and I have played dozens and dozens of times. We've got it down to where we can finish a game of this in under 20 minutes. It's practically a filler for us, whereas most people, I think, go for 40 minutes because we know it so well. But um, it's incredibly rich, thinky, crunchy. This is not a good game to take on the road if you're trying to teach people at an RV park because it's uh, it's a very obtuse and dense game. It's tough to learn. Uh, particularly, it's tough to teach because everybody makes their moves in secret behind a shield and then you reveal. So it's kind of hard to teach new players how to work through their turns. But uh, we absolutely love it. And like I said... Um, uh, if it were, if Jen were making this list, it would be her number one. So I had to make it my number two. I, I assume you are familiar with it. I'm familiar with it, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But once again, we do not, from the familiarity, we've missed another crossover. I was hoping maybe. Like but, I said, uh, I really don't think we're going to have any crossovers. Uh, we're getting towards the end. <laughs> yes, I know. It's, it's, it's almost upon us. You broke my heart. And I know what my final is, and there's no way you picked it. So uh, what's your number two? It's our last chance. My number two is A Fistful of Meeples. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so one of my favorite games is Five Tribes, um, which has like the whole Mancala yes. um, thing where you pick up meeples and you drop them off. So a fistful of meeples is like that as well. You're picking up meeples and you're dropping them off at these various locations on the board and then taking actions. And it's also a worker placement game. So depending on where you drop off the meeples, you'll perform a different action at each location mm -hmm. where you're trying to collect, you know, money and you're trying to get these gold bars for points. You're trying to get money so you can upgrade your buildings, the marquee tiles, because you claim buildings. It's a really fun game. And there's even like, you know, duels that you can take place, take part in. There's a graveyard where people will get sent to once they, you know, don't survive the duel. Yeah. You know, there's, it's a really fun game, but it's, you know, some people would say it's a filler game, yes. but it is a very thinky filler game. Like, it is thinky. It's not just, you know, mindless fun. It's thinky fun, and I really love it. I agree. Yeah, I, um, yeah. Uh, what's the designer? Johnny Pack. Which, what's his Johnny real Pack, name? Johnny Pack, yeah. John... 
Jonathan Pack Canton. Jonathan yeah. Pack Canton, or we'll just stick with Johnny yeah. Pack. I mean, he had such a Johnny great Pack. year. What was it? Two years ago, this and Coloma and Sierra West all came out. They were all fantastic games. Yeah. And um, yeah, th this is a blast. It's you're right. It's just a wonderful little Moncala. Pick them up, drop them off, activate the last building. Very thematic. And very thematic. Another great game to take out with you when you're going out west. Oh like yes, very much so. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good call. Well, that was our last shot. I mean, I like it, but not enough to take on the road. Sorry, Johnny Pack. I mean, I would probably take Coloma or Sierra West, but... Um, those are big. Yeah, those are big. Those are big. And speaking of big, you might not forgive me for my number one, Sarah. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I said I had one more co-op up my sleeve, and my number one is Gloomhaven. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the deal. <laughs> I love Gloomhaven so much. It's my number three game of all time. And um, if there was only one game I could have that we were just going to play, you know, re repeatedly, obsessively over the course of, let's say, three months or six months or a couple of years on the road, this is the one I'd want to take. But I dismissed it out of hand because, of course, it's got one of the biggest boxes in the industry obviously. And that's not going to work in RV living. And even putting that aside, when you set the whole game up, it's ginormous. There's no way you're going to fit it on a little RV table. So why is it on my list? Why am I cheating? I'll tell you. Um, I started thinking of other games I could that could scratch the same itch. So, you know, I wanted to have a big cooperative, sprawling adventure. I, I wanted to have that uh, in my back pocket to be able to play. And so I thought long and hard about Diceborne Heroes. I came this close to putting um, Assault on Doom Rock. Assault on Doom Rock is probably in my top 15. But in the end of the day, I thought, no, 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 it's got to be Gloomhaven. Nothing's as good as that. So I thought about Jaws of the Lion, which comes in a much smaller box. And it's, that's a lot more reasonable. It doesn't take up as much space because you uh, all the maps are in a book. But there's only four characters, and that's not Gloomhaven. I mean, I want I want the hundred plus missions, especially more if you download all the stuff that's online. And so I thought, how can I make this happen? How can I do this? Well, one, most of my other stuff was in very very tiny boxes. I'm sure you will agree. So you'll allow that. And now here's the trick. I went and I got out my box of Gloomhaven, I did some surgery on it, and if you only get out the player boards and um, the, uh, what do you call it, the standees for the, for the monsters and the tokens for treasure chests and traps and stuff like that, if that's all you bring, the game gets, it doesn't quite get down to ticket to ride size box, but only a little bit bigger than that. And so how can you play the game if you leave out all the player boards and the monster boards and stuff like that? And so I spent an hour last night playing around with Gloomhaven Helper, which is an app you can install on your phone or on a laptop, and um, it takes care of everything else. Um, if you're looking at the screen, half of what is on the screen right now would exist on my laptop monitor. Um, all the information, all the cards you draw, all the things to keep track of player states. We wouldn't even be bothered bringing the miniatures. We would just use dice from some other game to represent us walking around in the dungeon. And um, so I am really bending over backwards to make this fit. I'm doing everything I can to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. But if you're just look, if you're just putting, I have a, I have a very tiny laptop. It's a Lenovo Yoga. Uh, so it's a tiny laptop that would sit that keeps track of all the bookkeeping, and that's 50% of everything that's on the table. And it's just the board that we're walking around and the miniatures. I believe it would fit, and I believe it's worth making the room to put on my number one, uh, my third favorite game of all time. I would not want to leave home without it, Gloomhaven. And um, I, I appreciate I do not have much defense if you would like to cross-examine now. No, I will allow Okay. It. I will allow Excellent. it. Excellent. <laughs> you, you, you did have dice thrones, but still. That's true. I, I, now, I feel, I feel like you've, you know, you've made a lot of effort to bring it. You've justified how you're able to do it. I, I would allow it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, that's been very gracious of you. Um, I felt kind of bad reading you the riot act about Dice Thrones, knowing that this was coming up as my number one, but well, you were much more gracious than me. Thank you very much. That is true. All right. So yeah, you're right. No crossovers on our nope. list. All right. What is your number my, one? My number one is Fleet the Dice Game. Ooh, nice. Obviously, I had to have a roll and write, and Fleet the Dice Game is my favorite roll and okay. write. It is a very strategic roll and write. And you made a comment earlier about um, dry erase markers. Yeah. So whenever I have roll and writes, I always laminate the sheets and I use wet erase there markers. So I would be doing that before hitting the road, which I've already done with Fleet the Dice Game anyway. Okay. 
Yeah, and I love this one. It's one of those games where it's very combo tastic, where mm -hmm. you're trying to like, you know, fish for different types of fish, and you're going into the wharf and doing different activities there as well. So you're using dice, you know, to try to make these amazing combos to get the most out of it. And in addition to all of that, it has an amazing solo mode. I've yes. played it solo several times and the solo mode is really good actually. It is very good as well. And the dice are absolutely stunning. I love the mm. dice. I love the theme. I think it's another perfect thematic, like strategic game for the road. I, yeah. It's an excellent choice, and now I am so curious to find out what will happen when you eventually play Hadrian's Wall. Oh my god, I really need to. Yeah. I really want because, to. Because I mean, a Fleet the Dice game is a brilliant game, and for quite a while, it was like the high watermark of uh, roll and write depth and complexity. It was the, the heaviest hitter on the block. Um, but then, since we've had like Roman Roll, that one's probably heavier. And uh, But now, Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall is in some ways... Um, you know, when, when I when I did a video for it, I said this is kind of like Gonshon's clever taken to an eleven. But really, I would have been better off saying it's like Fleet the dice game taken to an eleven. Everything you love wow. about Fleet, um, but then you know triple the amount of combos and options. So I wonder. But it's still, this is a, a fantastic one too. And also, I would say yeah. it's much more approachable. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think you could. I mean, I think the subject matter uh, is has, has kind of a, a nice uh, universal appeal. I mean, you know, the the. I mean, well, heck, if, if you're on the road, you're all about the open air. So the open uh, sea breeze on your face and all of that kind of makes sense too. Yeah. That is a good choice. Number one. Wow. That is strong. Yeah. But I can't. I can't fault it. It is an excellent choice. Okay, folks. That was it. Um, that was both of our absolute must-haves. Um, did you have any that you wanted to put on and you just couldn't, you just couldn't quite fit them or like any honorable mentions? Yeah, there were like, uh, I had a solo game, like Mr. Cabbage Heads Garden, which I really enjoy. Wow, really? Oh, that is awesome. That is a neat little game. Yeah. It is. I love it. And I feel like it has a lot of replayability as well because you have all the different neighbors you can switch out and, you know, so there's different varieties of neighbors you can have in the same game, which will, you know, make each game different. I, I, yeah, I love that game. It is so good. And the artwork, it's, it's so different. And I feel like it's perfect for being on the road, uh -huh. that artwork, just like, yeah, I love it. But there was quite a few other games that I probably would have included. Um, yeah. All right. How about you? Um, well, I, I mentioned a couple along the way. I actually, let's I've got I've got a list of about thirty that I was really struggling oh, with. Oh wow! I mean, Elysium, Glenmore, Kashgar, Merchant of Silk Road, Targi, Isle of Skye, Calico, San Juan, Walking in Provence, Subdivision, Warsaw, City of Ruins, Habitats, Pandoria Merchants. Ah, oh, there's a rolling right you should check out if you haven't. Most people haven't. Mandala, Fuse, Cellar Draft, Fantastic Factories, Carson City, the Card Game, Carpe Diem. Um, and the crew, which I think I already mentioned, which was came in at my number 11. So those were the main ones I was considering. For all the same reasons, small footprint, relatively small storage space in most cases. Not always. I broke that rule once or twice. And um, But I really felt like I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I, you know I, the, I would happily continue to bring these out to the table over and over and over again. Because I don't know what you imagine your life on the road is, but I, I do tend to think there would be a surprising amount of game playing with me and Jen doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, board games are such a big part of my life, I'd have to play board games while on the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, like I said right up front, the uh, the legal defense, is, that's just your day job. That's just to feed the board game habit. It is. It's true. <laughs> and it's too bad you just didn't go with, like, the high, super-powered executive lawyer so you could uh, feed your habit a little bit more readily. Um, rather but than then just... I wouldn't have time for the habit, that's right? That's a good point, yes. If I were yes. some high-powered, Yeah. How do you have time anyway? You have to save all those people that are being evicted and whatnot because that's the kind of stuff you do. Man, that is, that is amazing. You are a superstar. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. This was a lot of fun. And true to form, how long are we at here? This, I think, we're only at an hour and 12 minutes so far, which is like half the time uh, that I normally do with these. But that is a, a testament to you and your board game in a minute ethos that you brought it here to Rado Runster as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's true. Well, cool. All right. Well, um, folks, uh, if you want to check out Sarah, all of her links for all of the socials are um, down in the show notes. I'll put something, probably her YouTube channel, up there. You can hit that I. And uh, so you can keep an eye out for what Sarah has coming in the future. She just uh, celebrated her one-year anniversary, and I suspect she has very exciting stuff coming in the future. Thank you. Right. I hope so. Well, cool. Then that is it, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long and bye bye And boom. All righty. I will stop recording now.